Now, the architecture that we chose is, is like a PC in many ways, but supercharged to bring out its full potential as a gaming platform. For the uh, CPU, we chose the most familiar architecture on the planet, the x86, uh, allowing us to tap into over three decades of programming expertise. For the graphics processor, we decided to use a highly enhanced PC GPU, something that would be easy to develop for in the early days of the platform lifecycle, but at the same time, a, a GPU with remarkable long-term potential. And for system memory, I'm proud to announce that we are equipping the system with eight gigabytes of high-speed unified memory, both satisfying the number one developer request for ease of game creation and also increasing the richness of content achievable on the platform. And this system memory is backed by the massive local storage that only a hard drive can provide. Overall, this architecture is designed to ensure that the very best games and the most immersive experiences will reach the player. Now, the next few demos are live, so I get the pleasure of sharing with you, for the first time, the new controller. And here it is, the DualShock 4. Thank you. So, during the development of the DualShock 4, we worked with key partners in the development community to enhance the feel of the joystick and the trigger buttons. The uh, result is a much tighter sense of control over in-game actions. We also um, took this as an opportunity to enhance the rumble capabilities and reduce the controller latency. And finally, we added a few new features. Um, a touchpad as a new form of input, a share button and a headphone jack to enhance social interactions, and a light pad as a, uh, excuse me, a light bar as a simpler, more friendly way to identify players. And this new controller was designed in tandem with a second peripheral, a stereo camera that can sense the depth of the environment in front of it and track the 3D position of the controller via its light bar. Now, this first live demo it uh, shows the payoff from the augmented PC architecture. This is Unreal Engine 4 from Epic, running in real time on prototype hardware. There's some very sophisticated technology here, GPU accelerated particle systems and realistic transmissive materials with substantial subsurface scattering. And this is all running in real time. I can look around as the animation plays using the touchpad input. Not only do we have the power to drive this level of application, but we also have, in PlayStation 4, an extraordinarily easy conversion path from the PC world. Now, as to how we accomplish this, <clears throat> PlayStation 4 is centered around a powerful APU that combines eight CPU cores with a state-of-the-art GPU with almost two teraflops of computational performance. Putting CPU and GPU on the same die gives them streamlined access to a common pool of memory. And with PlayStation 4, we're taking an unprecedented step. For system memory, we're using GDDR5, the type of memory typically reserved for uh, top-of-the-line, high-end graphics cards. This gives us 176 gigabytes per second of bandwidth and provides a further boost to the GPU performance. Now, earlier I said we were using a highly enhanced PC GPU. Principally, we've modified the GPU to make compute easier, which is to say we've made it practical to use the GPU as a general-purpose computational device. This next live demo is a million-object physics simulation from Havoc. This is primarily running on the GPU, not the CPU. Tasks that can fully occupy the CPU cores will be achievable using just a fraction of the PlayStation 4 GPU. Overall, our goal has been to architect the system so as to support a breadth of experiences. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the development community will choose to use this tool that we've provided for them. 